Hey Scribblers, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Greg Guntanis, author of the Lance Gedrin Mystery Series, now available on Amazon in ebook and paperback. I release a lot of writing and publishing related content on my channel, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. All right, in today's video, I want to talk about how to price your books on Amazon. I think it's a topic that's really important for a lot of indie authors out there, and it's really cool to analyze how different price points, as well as page counts, how they affect your royalty rate. So in this video, I'm going to show you how the first two books in my series, how the difference in their pricing has affected my royalties, and also how the difference in the page counts has done that. Now, before I do that, I think it's important to note sort of the two general schools of thought when it comes to pricing. One of them, of course, is the very low pricing but higher volume of sales approach. So that sort of model is you price really low, maybe 99 cents or lower, and you hope to just have a very high volume of sales that will make up for the loss in price. Versus on the flip side, you have another school of thought, which is you price high, therefore you might not necessarily get as high of a volume of sales. However, that would sort of be offset by your higher price point and hence your higher royalties. So. Those are kind of the two general schools of thought. Obviously, there is no right or wrong answer. It really depends on each writer, what they want to achieve, what genre they are writing in, and how they really want to create their brand going forward. Maybe you want your brand to be sort of the discount books and you want to just attract more and more readers all the time who want a free book or maybe you want a 99 cent book or maybe you want to price high and have readers always pay a decent amount of money for your work or somewhere in between. So for me, I write mysteries. It is a very popular genre um, for readers out there and I use my own imprint. It's called Rowdy Books and I publish everything on Amazon. I'm exclusive to Amazon right now and with the first two books in my series I have uh, decided to price a little bit higher than normal because I sort of went into it with the understanding that because I am a new author I'm not necessarily going to achieve the initial high volume of sales. So I wanted to still get a decent royalty and I wanted that lower initial volume of sales to be offset by the price point. So that's kind of where I'm coming from in this video and hopefully all of you like it and maybe you know learn a thing or two. So let's get into it. I, hear, I am here on my KDP dashboard and you can see the first two books in my series, The Night Contract and The Fink. Now, The, the Night Contract is priced at $4.99, so let's analyze the differences in royalties with the ebook of The Night Contract. So here you can see I have the 70% royalty plan because my ebook is priced at $4.99. Amazon tells you that if your book is priced between $2.99 and $9.99, you qualify for uh, the 70% royalty plan. Conversely, if you price your book below $2.99, then you only get 35% royalty. One of the key things to note here as far as the the royalty, there is a delivery fee that Amazon does charge and that delivery fee depends on how big your file is. Now obviously on the 35% plan there is no delivery fee and the reason for that is because you are getting a substantially lower royalty. So here 
I've priced the night contract at $4.99. There's an eight cent delivery fee. The book right now is around 270 pages for the paperback. So that might give you a little bit of an idea. If you have a book that is way longer than that, expect a little bit of a higher delivery fee. And if it's lower than around 270 pages, expect a lower delivery fee. But this is what my delivery fee is, eight cents, and my royalty is $3.44. So that means that every night contract copy in ebook that I sell, I receive $3.44. Now, what if I had priced the night contract at 99 cents to achieve that 35% royalty? So let's flip it here to 35 cents. Let's put 99 cents here as an example. And you can see that my royalty at 99 cents would only be 35 cents. So let's do a little bit of an example, and I think this example here will illustrate how the different schools of thought come into play when it comes to pricing on Amazon. So let's say that we want to receive a $100 royalty check from Amazon, say in our first month that the book comes out. That'd be a nice royalty check. So what do we have to do at these different price points in order to achieve $100 in royalties? Well, if we have our ebook priced at 99 cents, and I'm doing a little bit of math here on my uh, calculator, if our ebook is priced at 99 cents and we get a 35% percent uh, I'm sorry, a 35 cent royalty, we would need to sell 285 books to get $100 in royalties. Okay? Now, let's go back to 70% and let's go to the $4.99 price point that I had for the Fink, and that is the current, or I'm sorry, that I have for the night contract and is the current price of the ebook. How many copies do I need to sell at this current price point in order to achieve my $100 royalty check? Well, at this current price point, I just need to sell 29 copies and I achieve $100 in royalties. So right there, you really see the difference in the two models. I would need to sell 285 at 99 cents to achieve 100 bucks versus selling only 29 copies at $3 uh, at $4 at 99 cents to achieve that $100 in royalties. So that was part of the impetus for me to price my books a little bit higher. Yes, I am a debut author. I had my first two books debut this past November. However, I knew that going in it would be difficult to achieve sort of a solid footing and a solid fan base right off the bat. So that lower volume of sales, I sort of expected that going in, so I wanted to price a little bit higher. Now, let's go back To the bookshelf and let's see how this is affected with paperback. There's a lot of talk about ebooks but a lot of times writers often don't think about the paperback pricing or maybe um, don't know much about the paperback pricing. So if we go here to our paperback pricing here for the night contract, you can see that the royalty structure is completely different from the ebook structure. So for paperbacks on Amazon, you get a 60% royalty rate. However, that royalty rate is minus the printing cost. So here for the 270 page paperback of the night contract, it costs Amazon $4.09 to print the book. And you can see that my royalty 
is $4.90 per paperback. I've listed my book at $14.99. Amazon tells you that it's got to be between $10.23 and $2.50. And the reason that there is a minimum is because the printing cost essentially cannot exceed the the price of the, the the actual book, the list price. Otherwise, it would create a lot of uh, confusion and you wouldn't get any sort of return or any sort of royalty or anything like that. So basically, this would, would be their structure. And then there is an option for expanded distribution. And expanded distribution would be in other marketplaces like re retailers, libraries, academic, and there it's only 40 cents. But here for the paperback, let's just toggle with the pricing, for example. So $4.90 is my current royalty rate. So for every paperback of the night contract that I sell, I get $4.90 in royalties, but let's just put it at the minimum here, $10.23, and see what happens to the price. And right here, you can see that big difference, right? I put it here at the minimum that Amazon is telling me, and I'm going to net $2.05 a book. Now, obviously, you know, as writers, we want to focus on our story, and we want to make it the best it can possibly be for readers. However, as indie writers, we also need to come at this from a business perspective as well, right? Because we are writing both for fun, but also as a business, right? We do want to earn money from our work, or at least that's hopefully what um, the majority of the indies out there are striving to achieve. At least for me, you know, I really like writing these mystery novels. However, I also um, like seeing sales from them. It's really cool that other people are, you know, buying my work and resonating with it. So I want to try and achieve the best of both worlds as I, uh, that I can. I want to have a really good book, but I also want to have really good sales. That would be just absolutely amazing. But here you can quickly see the difference between pricing at the minimum or somewhere in between that. So that's um, how the paperback uh, royalties work. And just for the for comparison, let's go back to the bookshelf. And let me show you the Fink, which is book two. I have the ebook priced a dollar more. And it's at five ninety nine, and as you can see, the delivery fee is a little bit less. This is a shorter book. I believe it was around two hundred and forty pages versus the two hundred and seventy pages of the night contract, and the delivery fee is about two cents cheaper from before, and my royalty is. Four dollars and fifteen cents. So it's a little bit of a higher royalty than the night contract, but that's because the price point is a little bit higher. So this video, I hope, shed a little bit of light on how pricing works on Amazon and what an author can do to sort of toggle with the pricing and to achieve, you know, various. Uh, royalties, structures, and things like that. So obviously I can't advocate one way or the other because there are many authors out there who do quite well on the lower pricing and higher value model. Maybe they go perma-free on the first book in a series or they go 99 cents on the first book and they just gradually increase the pricing of all the subsequent books. And they have a high volume of sales, and eventually, with each book that comes out, that um, grows their royalties. 
And on the flip side of that, there are definitely writers out there who maybe don't have that high volume of sales, but are doing almost as well, if not better, as those that have gargantuan sales at the lower price point. And that's because they can afford to have less sales with these higher royalty structures and higher price points. So every author has to kind of make that decision for themselves. But I hope all of you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments for scribblers out there, or maybe you are currently messing around with your pricing or you have learned things from pricing your books on Amazon, feel free to um, smash that like button and leave a comment down below. I really like hearing from all of you writers out there. So if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. It's a way for YouTube to see if my content is resonating with other writers out there. So there you have it. I'll see all of you in the next video. And as always, keep scribbling.